So it's two for the skill, one for attribute, and then one for aid. In case Yo, can I aid? Can... Oh, wait, it doesn't matter. It you help. have to roll that before. Yeah, I know, but it wouldn't and help. And you, you need a skill as well. Oh, that's we trained? Yep. Don't believe mine is trained. I can train it next time. So I do believe if they win the, the thing for the cargo, you don't get a, a better prize. Yes, but I, I I thought so. I thought this role for was for to set a price. Is this to barter a better a higher price, or just just to set a price? Because you never set a price, so that's what I thought we were rolling for. Yeah, that's true. I, I suppose. Yeah. But yeah, you the initial offer was what hundred thousand yes. for all of it. Yeah, so I, I suppose roll the trading charisma again. So you put down the the price. They put down their counter offer. So now you can. What was the counter so offer? Roll you. Uh, a bit less than that. You want to give us a number so that we can roll for if we want to try and get higher than that, a little higher than that. So. With his estimate and, you know, the overhead and, you know, the, the usual business bullshit they have to deal with is probably like 70. 70? Right, so now you can roll it, and if you get higher than him, we get a 20% increase on that. Because you have two barter, I believe. Can you still roll oh, the 1d6? Um, no, I, I rolled a 6 and a 2, so I don't think I can re-roll those. Oh, uh, it's only on a 1? Okay. All right. Good luck. And uh, now this would be if uh, if he rolls higher than Ben, then it's seventy k. If he rolls lower, then it's twenty percent more. Which uh, I'll do the math if we need. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I don't know if the PC wins in this case. Or <laughs> it's a tie. I don't know. This would be your. Your choice, Health Forge. I think I just go to PC in this. Okay, because yeah. the system is so lethal and, and dangerous for players char player characters anyway. So I think there's a lot more lenient towards players than okay. PC. So then, yeah, we get 84,000. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to, to go with that. You win this, but, you know, zero degrees of success on it. Yeah. Well, it's not the degree. So the way it works, it says right here is... Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you yeah. get a, Slightly more too. Yeah, so eighty four thousand instead of seventy thousand. So right in the middle about we said a hundred days to seventy, we barred it to about eighty four. Sounds good. So I'll put this in the ship fund and I'll help them transport the things by teleporting them out. If that's okay with them. Yeah, otherwise they can just have have their crew come pick up the parts. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't like matter. The, the crates might be a bit heavy on the heavy side, but they can just you know, call in a van. And, yeah. You know, have it removed in like 20 minutes or something. All right. Yeah. So it doesn't, either way. Uh, I did add the price to the ship fund for now. Yep. All right. So we got rid of the illegal cargo. Now we do have to animate things and we still have to figure out what else we're going to do in this planet. I, I think Brody is resting. At least I hope he is. Yeah, Brody, what are you up to as this uh, crazy business stuff goes on? Uh, I'm laying down. All right. You Sounds found good. a comfortable couch somewhere. I've never heard the comfortable. There's no comfortable couches. There's never a comfortable couch. They're always just a little bit off. See, for me, it's more of couches not being big enough lengthwise for me to lay down comfortably. So it's like my legs like up on the yes. side or hanging off the side to make up for Yep, always have my head legs up too. Now I don't know how tall your character is. Tall enough that comfortable couches are a thing. <laughs> it's a pleasure planet, man. There's they always a couple size couches of every size. Now, I don't know if this... I know there's, like, some moving stuff. Usually the people that ride mechs are super, super tiny. Is this true for this world? That's only because they're Japanese. <laughs> okay. I'm Never mind. You said it did not be. 
I feel like the racism this time has been turned up a level. He said we were all thinking it. <laughs> I, I... God damn. All right, so about 15 minutes later, the van leaves with the two people and they have uh, all their stuff and you have gotten a, a chirp from your compad saying, hey, stuff has been sold, you have cash in your account. Oh, good. Money, money, money. All right, so in that case, uh... Eight PM. Sounds good. Yeah, so it's roughly eight PM as the, the business concludes. So yeah, what uh, what do you wanna do now? You have a a truck filled with uh, anime related products and uh, a uh, driver who is passed out on a comfortable couch. Well, we know we have to move the anime stuff to our ship, right? Because we're gonna take this uh, off planet for the guy, right? So uh i took you know I, I was resting a bit during the trip so you know i can always take the truck and see if we can i can get it to the to our ship and just load everything in and also while doing that you know i can check the spaceport and see how security is yeah that sounds like uh it might work yeah. i don't know if ben wants to come or if he wants to do something else that's his choice yeah i'll come and scope out the ship yeah, and I'm gonna you know try and call up people I know, see what the hell's going on, if we've been attacked or anything is happening with my family, because I'm kind of the blank, and I'm gonna call the other sister that I told to get out and see what where she is and what she's doing, and if she's in a secure location. A lot of things. So Brody, are you doing anything other than resting, or that is until someone tells needs you for something? How much time has passed since we got to the warehouse? Like an hour. About an hour total. Uh, I'm probably still going to be laying down for at least a couple more hours. All right. So, yeah, bro, you're sleeping. Ben, what are you doing now that the business is concluded? Yeah, was uh, Vel already heading to the starport? I was getting ready. Okay, yeah, I'm just uh, following her to the starport. So, are you driving or teleporting? We will be driving the truck. We might as well, since we're going there, might as well try and see if we can load in the anime cargo that we want to take off planet. But I believe that's fairly, I don't know, it's legal cargo as long as, you know, as far as we know. We might as well store it now before we go and see if we can buy any more cargo for our ship. All right. Yeah, so it takes you a bit of uh, finagling to get the truck out again. You know, reversing and driving stick with the 18 wheeler is not the easiest thing in a confined space. Yeah, I've been playing your truck later, all right? I still came anime. back up with the truck. <laughs> I hate backing up with the truck. Yeah, especially in a very confined space yeah. as well. You we never go straight back. And you always scrape the paint and get at least a couple of percent damage to the trail. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I see with some, uh, minor paint, paint scraping, uh, you have uh, managed to back out and start heading towards the spaceport. Right. Yeah, as you uh, as you get closer and closer to it, uh, you you do notice that there is a significant amount of military presence. The closer you get to it. So the military is still at the capital, it looks like. I wasn't sure if they moved on to the provinces that they're fighting with. But this kind of confirms that they are still at the capital. I guess they might be the I guess they might be the ones that are protecting the king and the queen here. I mean you can make whichever assumptions you want. Yeah, I'm not yeah. gonna confirm or deny anything. Mm-hmm. That's me speaking out loud, sorry. 
Or maybe that's, that's me speaking to Ben. About what my assumptions are. Yeah, I'm just sort of nodding and pretending that I understand. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I'll just go towards the ship. Yeah, you, you arrive to um, almost the industrial entrance to the to the spaceport, and uh, yeah, you you do see there are heavy. So you have the normal soldier wearing the soldiers wearing their uniform and you know their rifles, mm. you know, slung just patrolling the area, and then the occasional. Soldier in in full power armor, wearing or using carrying heavy, you know, some some sort of heavy machine gun. And you also notice as you're driving towards it, there is a lot of drones flying around. Some of them has uh, visible weapons on them, uh, laser weapons or reactors. You don't know. But yeah, the closer you get to it, to the entrance, the heavier the surveillance, uh, military presence comes to the point where you drive up into the checkpoint. There is a, a bit of a line. See, there's um, two people, two ordinary uniformed soldiers, with one with a uh, dog is going between cars, clearing charging for either drugs or explosives. And then there is one person in the booth with un uh, normal uniform. Mm -hmm. And then you see on each side, on you know, two on the exit side and two on the entrance side, you know, behind chain link fence, wearing uh, power armor. And then in the distance, maybe 20 meters or so inside, as the gate opens and you drive through, uh, there is um, a, a fairly bulky mech suit standing there with a, um, a heavy machine gun attached to its forearm. So you think there's a couple of guys around? Yeah, there's probably like 10 or so total uniform and... Fully geared and, uh, out. Yeah. yeah, fully geared and ready for war. Oh, good. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, as long as they don't stop us or they don't bother us, I guess we'll just start just keep heading towards our ship. Yeah, as you um, as you roll into um, to the um, to the checkpoint after waiting for a bit in the queue, they uh, one of them comes up to you. And uh, demands the cargo manifest, and then um, yeah, they they have the dog mm. go take a a walk around the truck. I and start also... I start uh, visibly sweating as the drug dog brings back unpleasant memories, and I sort of uh you know <laughs> stuff my drug bags further into my backpack. It's an explosive dog, not a drug dog. I mean, it might be an explosive drug dog. <laughs> Maybe it's an explosive dog on drugs. Touche. Touche. I'm uh, writing this down. Thank you for, for this. <laughs> We're going to get attacked by drug dog dogs that carry around explosives one day. I mean, it happens I'll remember this. Anarchy, I'll so. remember this moment. It should be a wave was. in Call of Duty Zombies. Do we have that? I don't think so. Oh, that'd be hilarious. That'd be so good. Just see a fucking dog running towards you with a C4 on its back. Yes. But yeah, the, they, you clear the, the, the first one as your, all your papers are in order. And then, yeah, as you drive through the checkpoint, you, um, you drive through, um, a, a large scanner that's basically scanned the entire truck, everything in it. And then, yeah, you get stopped again on the other side. And you see this happen to all the, the trucks and cars that drive through the checkpoint. Okay. So you pass through the first initial checkpoint, you get scanned, and then there's another one that basically 
know, discuss any potential you know, oddities Issues. with the cans. Okay. And yeah, otherwise, you know, you get just waved through. You see one or two gets one or two uh, trucks get pulled over, one larger truck and one like, personnel car, but you um, you have no issues driving through. So you get uh, waved off uh, towards the hangar where you have your. Um, you you were told well by the the official that uh, no ship are allowed to take off. Uh, ah. Until the situation calms down a bit, but you can, you know, stay on the ship for now. Okay, I was gonna ask around for that. All right, good to know. Um, so we did we did make the ship without any issues, correct? Yeah, it just took a bit of extra time going ah. through security. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you can okay. you drive the truck over to to where your ship is, and yeah, mm-hmm. as you drive up to it, um, you see there is uh, there is a couple of soldiers just. In the wow. general vicinity of it, you know, guarding it, and there's also heavy docking clamps, you know, locking down the locking down the ship, so you can't just take off in the middle of the night. Then, uh, as I'm getting out of the truck, I wanna let Ben know that I'll start teleporting all these crates into our ship for now. If you don't mind, maybe go and ask around how long this uh, blockade is gonna last, basically, and how you know what's really going on, like. Yeah. The captain yeah. attacked and just tell them that you know we were, we were on vacation. We just want to get out of here. Yeah, I'll just go around, ask for some basic news, and maybe mix it in with small talk with some of the other uh, civilian-looking people around the spaceport. All right. So before that, Val, are you actually going to just teleport crate by crate, or are you just going to drive the bloody truck into the ship? Um, I forgot the ship is not small. I'm going to drive the bloody truck into the ship. (laughs) Yeah, because if you teleport a crate by crate, you would literally be doing nothing but that 20 hours a day for the next three months. How many crates are there? Well, it's probably probably three to 400 tons of cargo in in the trailer. Oh. Oh, okay, yeah, no, no, I will be moving the trailer in, and just, I don't know if they want their truck back, but if not, we will keep the truck to transport the things Actually, out of it. Actually, no, that wouldn't be possible. It would be roughly 150 tons of cargo, because they realized the cargo, cargo bay only holds 160, including the truck. Wait. I don't think a truck can hold 150 tons of cargo. It's a large trailer. It's a large trailer and it's futuristic truck. <laughs> it's a so, space yeah. truck, Erden. <laughs> yeah, the math checks out, man. Trust yeah, it's this. just... I don't know if we have the volume for that much. It must be like a... Okay. Let's go. So 100 and how much? Maybe you want to like make it 120. 150 total with the truck included. Truck and okay. trailer included. We have 10 tons of cargo left in the cargo hold? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. That's okay. Are we getting paid for this, for transporting this? Uh, you know, we're getting paid in, um, in the knowledge well, that we've done a good deed. Man? No, no, no. How about you contact your man and see how much we're getting paid for transporting 150 goddamn tons of cargo? Look, the world needs to see the uh, third season of uh, this show. You know what? The world can see the third season as long as my pockets are filled with enough cash that, you know, we're losing from not being able to carry it basically anything else. Call him, see how much he's willing to offer for our the transport of these beautifully crafted third season goods. Yeah, I can, uh, I can give you the, um, I'll give you the info. For calling him, <laughs> or uh, whatever you want to say to him. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I like to call the man. And be like, we have your cargo in our ship. What did you say uh, the transport fee you were gonna pay us was? 
So are you just going to randomly call up someone you have never spoken to before? And oh, say, hey, I'm going to call him and explain shit. to him who I am. Sorry. Hello, sir. That is an anime store. I am a friend of Ben Blackford. He, he is transporting your goods. We have just transferred your goods onto our ship. We want to, you know, settle all the paperwork and all that. And how much was it that you were going to... Well, what is our uh, transportation fee? I have your waifu, and if you ever want to see her again... You have a three-titty Gundam babe thing. That is a harsh negotiation right there. You steal a man's anime and expect him to pay ransom for it. <laughs> he gave it to us. Just think about it. We, yeah, we'll yeah, start flying uh, off and things will start disappearing into Ben's room slowly. I, I think we have a, a split screen moment here. So Val is on the phone, on the compad, having this conversation. And you see somewhere in this office, decked out like, uh, you know, otaku style, like the, the biggest weeb possible, you know, with all the, you know, paraphernalia available, you know, body pillow and everything, you know, on the, on the office chair, you know, mouse pad with the anime boobs, you know, for a wrist rest you know the, uh, the yes, whole thing sorry. basically as over the top as you can imagine and there's a man sitting there uh bald on top you know white long hair on the sides woman shoe mustache in a kimono old wrinkly man and he sits there and he's just stroking his beard and his mustache thinking about it is and it says yeah is it this guy No, no, no. Not okay. even close to it. Okay, just making sure it's not the wild guy. <laughs> I just saw the picture you, <laughs> you put up, Bumbo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, if you Google Princess Robot Bubblegum, it's from <laughs> GTA 5. It's that sen senpai. Princess senpai, Robo Bubblegum? Oh my god, it just it auto-completed. Should I do images? Video? What am I doing right now? You just look at the picture, the, the old man with the with the staff. That that's basically who is sitting in the office chair as you're having this conversation with him. This might be the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't see an old man. All I see is just a tiny looking girl that's half naked everywhere. Fucking GTA, man. Yeah, if you type in man? Sensei at the end of that. Oh, oh see, okay. Uh, the sensei. Yeah, at the end of that. Oh, I see. Oh, <laughs> the guy with the long ass beard, the yeah, bushy yeah. ass eyebrows. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> much what we see on the other end of this conversation you're having. I'm glad you have a picture in mind. <laughs> the fuck how's this GTA? How have I not seen this in GTA? Man, you just turn off the turn on the TV in game. But I think it's both single player and uh, online, and you, you can watch an episode of this. It's over the top. Oh God! All right, I guess I'm not. I know what I'm doing tonight. I'm turning up this GTA is, again. This is the. <laughs> The best thing I've ever seen. What did you just do? What did you just do, Tom? What oh my in god, the fuck is this? The bikini is literally a little triangle. The bikini is literally a little triangle with strings. Okay, well. Anyhow, so that, <laughs> so that happened. Yes. So uh, he contemplates, he strokes his beard. Is that all he's stroking? Thinking. I mean, while well, he's on the phone, yes. I oh. mean, we can only see like from <laughs> from basically belly button above oh, okay. and above because the desk is blocking the view, so you can't really see, tell okay, anything I'm else. I'm glad. It's the future, you know. We never know what the robots are programmed to do. You might have a robot princess, robot bubble. I mean, it is. Never mind. Just continue. Darkest timeline, I swear. 
Okay, we're in New Eden. Anything goes. <laughs>